Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about the 3D cursor. Now, this is arguably the most important modeling tool in Blender, the most versatile modeling tool in Blender. At least that's my opinion. And uh, it's one of the things that you really need to learn how to use correctly if you want to master your modeling skills. So in this video, I'm going to show you four techniques with the 3D cursor that you can use to really, really improve your models. Now, first things first, let's talk about the pivot point. Now, by default, if we rotate an object, it is going to rotate around its origin point, which is this little orange dot that you see right here. And if we scale an object up or down, it is going to scale towards or from this, this origin point that you see right there. Now, instead of the origin point, we can also use a 3D cursor. So let's say we place our 3D cursor somewhere to the side here. And by the way, we can just create an object and then place that object somewhere because we have a little bit more control over where we move our objects versus when we just click around with the 3D cursor. So let's place our cube right there. And then with Shift S, we're gonna snap our 3D cursor to that cube. And now if we go up here to this little menu and we open it and we click on 3D cursor, we're gonna set the 3D cursor as our pivot point instead of the origin point. So what this means is that since our 3D cursor is located right here, when we rotate this object, it is going to rotate, as you can see, around uh, the 3D cursor. It also means that if we scale this object down, it is going to scale towards the 3D cursor and the same thing happens if we scale it upwards. Now let's have a look at how we can use this feature to our advantage when we're modeling something, okay? So I have this commander hatch separated from that tank I have in the background over there. And I'm gonna show you a technique that I like to call rotation modeling. And the reason I like to call it rotation modeling is because we create one model and then we copy it and rotate it around a 3D cursor and place it exactly on another part of the model. So it's all perfectly symmetrical and perfectly uh, equally distant from the middle. All right, so in this case, we wanna create a couple of screws right here. Let's say I wanna create a little bolt here. I'm gonna place my 3D cursor there and add in a new cylinder with only about six vertices. And then we're gonna scale that cylinder down so it looks like a bolt right there, okay? So that's fine and this is exactly where we want it to be. But now we want to take this uh, screw and we want to copy it on all these other little bays that you can see around this little, uh, little commander hatch right here. Now there's eight bays, which means we have to copy this seven more times. We have to place it in all of these holes here, okay? So what we can do manually is we can just duplicate this and just place it over there. But the problem with this is that it's first of all going to take quite some time, especially if we're gonna have more screws. If you're using this for a technique which requires many more objects than this, then doing it manually is gonna take you forever. And the other problem is that it's not going to be very accurate. Now again, in this case, it doesn't really matter if it's too accurate or not, because as long as it's roughly in the middle of this bay, no one's gonna be able to tell the difference, but sometimes you need it to be very completely accurate. So uh, that's when you need to use this technique, which I like to call rotation modeling, all right? So as we did before, we're going to place our 3D cursor in the middle of this object. Let's say we're gonna select this circle right here and we're gonna place our 3D cursor there with Shift S. And now our 3D cursor is the pivot point. So we can just select this object and then we can go to edit mode. I'm also going into wireframe so you can see what's going on a little bit better. And since we have eight holes that we need to copy this into, which are all equally distant from each other, that means for the first we can just duplicate this, snap it back, and rotate it by 180 degrees, okay? And now we place this into the other side. Uh, so it's perfectly uh, symmetrical over here on the other side. Now we can deselect that and select everything and duplicate it again and rotate it by half of that angle, which is by 90 degrees. And now we already have four of the screws taken care of. And then we can once again, just select everything, duplicate it, snap it back and rotate it by 45 degrees. And now we have eight screws, which are placed perfectly all around with this little commander hatch right here. And we can just parent that to the object right there. Now, the second trick we're going to learn today is going to be mirroring with the 3D cursor. Now, I hear you say, yeah, we can mirror with the mirror modifier, but the problem with that is that the mirror modifier is a little bit clunky. It's, it's a little bit inconvenient at times because you have to go over here and then create uh, a new modifier and you have to place the origin point, you have to adjust the axes and you have to separate the objects because it copies the whole object and uh, it takes a little bit of work and it's not always applicable, okay? So what we can do instead, very simply, we can use the 3D cursor to duplicate something and mirror it across the 3D cursor and place it exactly on the other side. And let me show you what I mean by that. Let's say we want to copy this little window right here into this hole right here, okay? We want it to be perfect. So once again, we're gonna place our 3D cursor here in the middle and bear in mind the 3D cursor is still our pivot point and we can select all the loose parts from this little window, okay, like that. Let's go to wireframe view. We can duplicate that and then snap it back into place with right click and then we're gonna scale it to minus one on the X axis and we're gonna hit enter. And now it just got scaled to minus one. So it just got inverted across the 3D cursor and it's placed exactly on the other side of this hatch. Now, when you do this, you have to keep in mind that you have to correct the normals. So just select everything and press shift N. Otherwise you're gonna have some shading issues after. 
But this is much easier than a, than a mirror modifier, because if we were using a mirror modifier, we would first have to separate this to a new object, then we would have to bring the origin point here into the middle, then we would have to adjust the axis. It would be a lot more work to do than just simply invert this with a 3D cursor. As you can see, you can just do this in a couple of seconds. Place your 3D cursor there, select this part, okay, duplicate it and scale it across the 3D cursor and correct the normals, and you're done. And the last technique that we're going to talk about today is something that I like to call vector scaling. Now, if you've ever learned anything about vectors in mathematics, then you're going to know exactly why I call this technique vector scaling. And if you're a beginner to Blender, then this might be a little bit more difficult for you to grasp because this is quite an advanced technique. But I promise you, in fact, I guarantee you that if it's only a matter of time before you come across a situation where you're really, really, really going to need a technique like this, okay? So pay attention, I think this is a very important tool and it's really important if you want to improve your blender skills. This is going to make a big difference. So let's take a look at this lower plate on our T72 tank right here, okay? Now this plate has a couple of bolts down here, it has, some, uh, has a panel right there, and all this is under a certain angle. Now I have no earthly idea what this angle is, okay? Estimating is not gonna cut it. I can probably use some measuring tools of Blender. I can extrude a new face here, then measure out the angle between that face and this one here, and then create a new object and then rotate it or something like that. But that would be a little bit too much work and it'll be a little bit too clunky to do. And it's not always going to do the job, all right? So let's say we want to take this shape right here and we want to make it a little bit longer. We want to make it a little bit more into this direction, kind of like this, right? I can also just align my view and move it there, but that's not really going to be very accurate. Okay, let's say I want to make it something like this, but I want to make it perfectly accurate. I, I want to keep it flat, otherwise we're going to get shading issues on this panel right here. Let's say we want to do that, and we want to keep the exact same direction as it already has here, okay? So what we can do then is we can use the 3D cursor and then scale uh, some of the vertices over here so they keep the exact same vector as uh, the vector that we would have between this point over here and our 3D cursor, okay? You can already see where I'm going with this because I've demonstrated scaling with the 3D cursor before. So we can place our 3D cursor right here and then we can just, let's also just place it at the bottom here just uh, for simplicity's sake, okay? We snap our 3D cursor to this vertex right here and then we take the vertex on top right here and we can just kind of scale it up like this. Now we wanna be exact so we're gonna scale it to two and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side, okay? Now, there's quicker ways to do this for the moment. I'm just trying to demonstrate how this works, okay? So we place our 3D cursor here, we scale it by two, and then we do the same thing for the other vertex over here, okay? We scale it by two, we can place our 3D cursor over here, scale this one by two, and we're also gonna come over here to the top and do the same thing. So 3D cursor down here, select this vertex and scale it by two. You can see now we have this shape was a little bit longer and it has exactly the same angle, it has exactly the same vector and it's completely perfectly flat like the rest of this surface right here. And we did all this without having any earthly idea what the angle of this shape is. So try to think about it and think about how you can use this technique. I promise you that it's only a matter of time before this comes in very, very, very handy. So make sure to practice this technique next time you're making a model. It's really going to be very useful for you, I promise you that. Guys, if you found this tutorial useful, then click like and subscribe. And be sure to check out some of my other videos where I talk about all kinds of different Blender tools and tips and tricks. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.